and welcome to Ducks No Sports. This week is my seventh installment of my NFL previews. As this week, I preview the NFC South. NFC South, for my money, is one of the best divisions out there. I mean, a lot of teams go from the bottom to the top. A lot of teams go from the top to the bottom. Very competitive year in, year out. And this year will be no different as you got four pretty good teams in this division. But we'll start at the top. Uh, New Orleans Saints, of course, if you didn't read the paper this offseason, you know, big, you know, big, big controversy over the Saints team. And of course, that has been the biggest question going into the year. Can they rebound from Bounty Gate? You know, of course, you don't know what Bounty Gate was. Um, um, basically, former defensive coordinator basically gave players more money on the table to take out QBs in their run to Super Bowl 2009. Guys like Kurt Warner, Brett Favre, and even Peyton Manning just, you know, get more money just to take break players' legs. Really disgusting story. Really, you know, really, really hurt me in a way. Just being a football fan, you know, you know it's, a, it's already a violent game, but nobody should be trying out there purposely trying to break a guy's leg. Or break a guy's arm, or even end his career. I mean, you know, maybe it's just me, but I just thought it was a disgusting story, and I really hope this is the end of bounties. Will it be the end of bounties? Who knows? Because there'll always be teams still trying to push the extra, just trying to push the envelope, and still want to be that team. And they came hard. Then you, I'll give the NFL credit. They came hard on them. You know, of course, they lost their coach, Sean Payton, for the year, and to me, this could be a huge loss. Because Sean Payne's a really good coach. And it's just not the more... It's beyond the X's and O's. Of course, he's good with X's and O's. He's a very good play caller. But, that being said, he does more. He's more... He, he, he He's a team guy. You know, he's a very good players coach. Drew Brees loves him. All these players love him, look up to him. When he's not there, I think it's a really positive influence for these players to be good. When he's not around, I'll be interested in how they play with him not there. Of course, they also lost their leader on defense, Jonathan Vilma. Um, will be interesting with Jonathan Vilma. Of course, they went, uh, stole uh, Curse Lofton away from their rivals in, in Atlanta. You know, Curse Lofton, a very good linebacker. Not Jonathan Vilma, though. Jonathan Vilma, probably the Drew Brees on defense, you know, calling out the plays. The, just the leader on defense will be missed. And he's still trying to appeal, trying to maybe, maybe get it down to 12 games. So we'll be back at the... At the last part of the season, but who knows? Only time will tell if that will happen. But I think with this team going forward, the bread and the butter has to be their offense. I mean, this team, let's face facts, with all this controversy, they still have a great team. I mean, their offense, the best offense in the league, I think. Drew Brees is just amazing. Maybe next to Aaron Rodgers, the best QB in the league. A definitely elite guy with so many weapons. I still think this offense is going to keep rolling. I mean, will Drew Brees throw for over 5,000 yards? Probably not, but will this team be still a great offense if Drew Brees is in the lineup? <laughs> You're damn right it is. And on defense, you know, kind of a, um, I would say not a horrible defense, but not a great defense. They more just, you know, they get after the passer. They come with a lot of blitzes, so they leave themselves open a lot. And when it's working, it's looking good. When it's not working, it's looking ugly. But that being said, I, I you know I still think this team it'll be interesting how this team plays this year because I think this team is going to be a very good team or a very crappy team. I think they're going to win twelve games or they're going to win four games. That's how I think it is going to be this year. It'll be interesting how they come out uh, the first few weeks. I mean, and the season red, red, red hot. But with all this controversy around the Saints this year, I just think it's just it's a too it's too much of an uphill battle. And I think the New Orleans Saints in 2012 are in for a rough, rough year and possibly even miss the playoffs. Alright, moving to our next team, the Atlanta Falcons. Of course, the biggest question going for them has to be um, is it time for Matt Ryan to become elite? You know, Matt Ryan, since coming in the league in 2008, has been a has been a good quarterback, you know, he's won games in this league, but when the chips are down, he's just not that guy. He's just not that, you know, guys get taken to the Super Bowl in the first few years. But that being said, though, I think 
it's not now or never for Matt Ryan. I still think Matt Ryan's a very good quarterback. I really think he can become an elite guy with the weapons he has. I mean, with this offense, with you know Roddy White, Julio Jones, who I don't know if you watched the preseason, Matt Ryan and Julio Jones, man, they got a connection like no tomorrow. You know, Tony Gallas, last year in the league, can he get the Super Bowl? You know, Michael Turner, very good, well offense. Another guy I like in their offense, actually, is uh, Harry Douglas in the slot. Very underrated receiver. Always seems to be open. Very good receiver. That being said, this offense has been good for the last few years. It's really been their catalyst to this team. But that being said, though, their weak part of this team has to be their defense the last few years. And in the uh, offseason, they went out and got big. And uh, by getting Mike Nolan to be a new, new defensive coordinator, great defensive coordinator, makes basically every defense he comes to is an elite defense. Not so He's not so much a great head coach, but he won't have a point to worry about that. As I think with this defense, though, losing Curtis Lofton to the New Orleans Saints, I think that's going to be a big blow because he was the Jonathan Vilma of the Atlanta Falcons. He was the guy. He was the leader on defense. He was the guy with the plays. You know, he was... You know, the Matt Ryan on defense. Very good linebacker. Will be missed. And the guy, uh, Tupu, the guy they replaced him with, fortunately went down. So it'll be interesting when he comes back. But who knows? I just think this year, the Atlanta Falcons, this is a big, with the Orange Saints and Golden Conference, this is when the Atlanta Falcons have to step their game up and take that level and take this division by the throat and do it. Because... If they can't do it this year, then they're never going to do it. Because I think with this team, with the offense running the way it can be, with Julio to Rodney White, you know, Michael Turner, Matt Ryan, all these great weapons, they have a great offense. They're going to put up points. It should be an elite offense in the league to their defense, which with a Mike Nolan, who is going to make that defense better. And I truly believe this defense is this defense isn't the best defense league yes but are they a good to all right defense yes they're not as bad as people give them credit to but this defense when they all play together they are one good unit and i really like this team going this year i really think atlanta's got a lot of things working in their favor this year from their offense to an improving defense and i really believe the atlanta falcons are a dark horse to make the super bowl and i love the atlanta falcons this year Moving to our next team, the Carolina Panthers. Of course, the big question has to be, can they have another good year under Cam Newton? Of course, last year Cam Newton came in and just let, lit the world on fire and had a great year. I really liked what I saw Cam Newton last year. You know, it's kind of like, he's the new Mike Vick, you know. You know, he can beat you with his legs and his arm. His arm is kind of inconsistent. Right now, but that's the only downside I can say to Cam Newton right now. Cam Newton, great talent, great player. Really elevate everybody around him on that offense last year to become better players. And, you know, at the end of the day, if they think after that horrible start they did last year, they may end up shot the playoffs. Of course, they didn't make the playoffs, but for this team to take the next level, their defense has to be a lot, lot better. And their defense a couple of years ago was a very good defense, a top defensive league. Falling off, you know, players getting older, players being hurt all the time. Defense isn't what it used to be. And I just think with Cam Newton, if he can elevate again, if Cam Newton doesn't hit that sophomore slump and he keeps going, I really think Cam Newton could be one of the greatest quarterbacks to ever play. I know it sounds crazy. I know it sounds crazy, but Cam Newton, very good talent, and is turning into a very good quarterback, guy who just wants it, guy who wants to win. And I love Cam Newton, and I really think Cam Newton um, is going to be good for years to come. And I really, you know, this could be an interesting team this year in Carolina because they could be a sleeper team to, to win this division. I mean, with the Saints thing, and if Atlanta stumbles, you know, maybe they're just they're just kind of there in the weeds right now, just just in the weeds right now. And they could be interesting to make to to win this division and possibly make the Super Bowl. I know it sounds crazy, but craziest things have happened in the NFL. And I really like the Carolina Panthers this year. And if everything rolls the way it can, I really like Carolina Panthers, a sleeper to win the NFC South. And our last team, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, one of the most disappointing teams last year for my money. Um, biggest question going in is can they go back to the playoffs? Of course, last year, last year they got up to a pretty good start. They got up to 4-2 and, and just fell off. 
you know, end up losing, you know, the eight, or yeah, eight, their last eight games of the season. Not a very good year for Tampa Bay. Everything just seemed to just didn't work, didn't mesh. Coach getting fired, new coach in there. Josh Freeman's play from a, from two years ago was really good, and last year was so bad. And I think that's another question going this year. Can Josh Freeman was was that just a fluke what we saw in two thousand and ten? Or is that who Josh Freeman was the more great side last year? So that has to be another big question. If Josh Freeman can get back to being a great NFL player, a great quarterback, I really think Tampa Bay can get back to the playoffs because this division, like we said, for all these teams have a real shot at winning this division. And Josh Freeman is to me, I didn't like Josh Freeman coming in, in into his career. Didn't like him in college. I thought 2010 was kind of a fluke, so I wasn't that shocked at how he played last year. But, you know, this is a guy who just loves loves to play the game, wants to be better. They went out and got him a weapon in Vincent Jackson in the offseason. Not a huge fan of Jackson. I think he checks out of a lot of games. Didn't really like the sign. Thought they gave him way too much money. Check, like I said, checks out of games. Not a team guy. Will be a headache. And I think this could implode with these two guys because... You know, this team, you know, last year, everybody was on Tampa Bay. They loved the way they were going. They just imploded last year. I think we saw they weren't as good as they, as we thought they were in 2010. You know, this defense, which used to be in you know, early 2000, was an elite defense with Warren Sapp and Brooks. You know, that's gone now. Now they're an all-right defense to a bad defense. And I just, going in 2012, I don't like Tampa Bay at all. I think... You know, a lot of people maybe think Tampa Bay could be a surprise team. I don't personally see it. And I think Tampa Bay is in for a rough year in 2012. And I think for another year, I think they're going to miss the playoffs. And I think maybe, just maybe, come draft, you may be drafting another quarterback. Because I don't think Josh Freeman is that guy. All right, so that's it for my preview of the NFC South. Now we get down to the good stuff. Who do I pick to win the division? I got to go with... I want to say Carolina, but I got to say the Atlanta Falcons win the NFC South. I love this team. This Their time is indeed now, and I really love the Atlanta Falcons, and they are a, mark my words, they, they are a dark horse to win the Super Bowl this year. Well, that's it for the NFC South. My next preview, my last preview, my last division preview is on the NFC West, you know, the NFC South, a pretty pretty competitive division. The NFC West, not so competitive. So that's till next time. But till next time, I'm Eric Ducks. We're saying I'm Ducks, and I know sports. Got it.